Hello, and thank you for tuning in for the Career Changer webinar. Our three presenters do an excellent job at dissecting the study process, the transition, as well as the perks of the field. It may be beneficial to take notes as our speakers provide a lot of helpful tools to assist you on your journey. Our first presenter is Elisa White, sharing her best practices for studying for your exams. Hi, my name is Elisa White, and I would like to take a few minutes to speak with you regarding pursuing the exams and the studying process. But first, I would like to give you a little background information on myself. I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have passed exams P and FM. Those are the probability and financial mathematics exams. And I am currently studying for exam MFE, and that is the modeling of financial equations exam. Um, I am a manager of contracting and operations for Tenet Physician Hospital Alliance. Um, it's an affiliate of Tenet Healthcare, which is a large um, hospital system based out of Texas. And as far as my educational background goes, I have a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from the Georgia Institute of Technology. I have a Master of Business Administration from Georgia State University and a Master of Health Administration from Georgia State University as well. So I have used four different um, study methods um, for the exams that I have taken and those are the use of study manuals, online seminars, practice exams and quizzes, and the SOA sample questions. I am on the health group administration track. My ultimate goal is to become a fellow in that particular area. So first I wanted to talk about um, study manuals. The best thing about the study manual is that it covers the entire syllabus in one place. When you are studying and working full-time as you will being a career changer, you want to save as much time as possible. The exams often come with a syllabus, and the syllabus just describes what will be covered, and they will offer multiple textbooks regarding what is to be listed or to be shown, or what you will be tested on, rather, on the exams. The textbooks don't really provide any exam-type questions, and that's the key to um, passing any of the actuarial exams, is making sure that you have many, many exam style questions. So a study manual, again, covers the entire syllabus. Each um, chapter or section is very detailed and is detailed with information that you will need to pass the exams. There are lots of sample problems in the study manuals and quite a few practice exams. I've had different study manuals that have had up to 11 practice exams, which is really good. The disadvantages of the study manuals, um, well, they're quite expensive. My study manuals have run on average about $300. So it's something to take into consideration as a career changer. Often the students get a discount, but full-time employed actuarial candidates don't really get a discount on any of the products. Um, sometimes the writing style of a manual can throw you off. It's not maybe that you don't understand the work, it's, it's just maybe the way that it's presented. So that's one thing to take into consideration when you're picking the study manual, is if you can get a sample and see if it's something that you understand. And also there's no simulated exam experience. So you're not really in a testing style environment when you're taking those um, sample exams. Sure, you can get a timer and time yourself while you're um, taking a practice exam, but the computer simulated exam style you will miss out on with a study manual. So next comes the online seminars and the great thing about them is that they are completely video lessons that you can watch at any time. So you can watch them on your lunch break, maybe before or after work. And there is an instructor that takes the time to explain things to you. So maybe something that's written may not really make a lot of sense, but to hear someone explain it to you may be a lot better. Um, online seminars often come with lots of notes. The slides are often um, presented in PDF form so you can save them for later. And the practice problems also can be downloaded. 
and they do offer a simulated exam experience um, for the practice exams that come with the online seminars. Now the disadvantages again are that they are quite costly. Again there is no discount for a career changer. Um, mainly, mainly there are discounts for students. And the information that I've um, observed in online seminars it's not as detailed as that in a study manual. So sometimes you can go through a seminar and not really feel as if you have um, attained as much information as needed for the exam. Also, the seminars offer fewer exam problems and fewer practice exams. So while you do get the exam in a sitting or in an environment that is quite similar to what you will endure or what you will experience in the actual exam, there are pretty much no more than three exams and you really need a lot more practice problems than that. So next we um, go to the practice exams and quizzes. I mean they are great. They are pretty much what you need to pass actuarial exams. You have to do as many um, practice problems and sample questions as possible. And with the practice quizzes and exams they're all given in the exam style sitting. So by the time that you have to sit for the exam, you'll be quite comfortable with um, the environment. The only con is that they can be a little expensive. Not as much as the uh, manuals or the seminars, because of course they don't come with any type of information or any type of lecture. But I have a um, three month subscription and that for practice exams, and, and that has run me about $150. With career changers, I know I keep repeating it, but there is no discount, so that's something that you'll have to keep in mind. Um, next are the SOA sample questions. You really want to take your time in, or take the time to look through these questions. Um, these are the types of questions that most likely will be on the exam. They're taken from previous exams, and unlike the others, they are free. It's something that you can download from the actuarial websites. So, for instance, with the Society of Actuaries, um, they offer free old exam questions. And, um, for instance, with exam P1, there were about 150 um, sample exam questions that the SOA made available. And if you could easily do those questions, you pretty much um, could pass the exam. Now, the only disadvantage is that sometimes the older exams are not of the same difficulty level as the new exams. And if you are using these questions as your main focus of taking the exams, you might find the exam a bit more difficult than the questions that you practice with, or you may find them a little easier. So they are exam questions, they did come from the exam, but they are old questions. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, which um, method of study do I use? I use them all during different times. For exam P, I used a study manual and I also used an online seminar. I also use the practice exams and I also use the sample questions. With exam FM, I only needed the study manual. I used the practice exams um, just to make sure that I was comfortable with that. And with exam MFE, I am using the study manual again and practice exams. It's just up to you what you're comfortable with. But I would like to add just a couple of more suggestions. Um, one website that I think you might want to visit first is the Actuarial Outpost. And it is a website where different actuaries, um, the casualty actuaries and um, the SOA actuaries do meet and just discuss the exams and their experiences with them. You may also find some study manuals at a discounted price. A lot of times people will sell their study manuals for maybe half the cost. And just because they are a little older, they are pretty much going to be the same manual that you would buy, especially if it was for an exam that was for the um, just the last sitting. So it's something to look into. And you also get to get other um, actuarial opinions or, at, or the candidates' opinions 
regarding the study manuals and the seminars, which ones work best for them. And I would always check that out before I go and, and purchase an exam. And I've provided the websites for the um, study manuals and the seminars and the practice exams that I've used. I always go to the At Tech Study Guide whenever I need a manual. Um, one of the best seminars that I've seen um, come from the infant infinite actuarial website. Um, I really enjoyed their seminar for exam P. It's really what helped me pass that exam. And Coaching Actuaries has a great site for practice exams and quizzes. I really recommend that, you know, even if you could just do a month's worth or maybe two weeks worth of practice exams, that you purchase a couple from them before you take the exam. And always, always go to the Society of Actuaries website and see what's the latest information on each exam. So I'm sure you um, would like to know how studying would affect your family. Well, um, in my particular case, it really wasn't that much of an effect on my family. They were very supportive of my decision, so I didn't really have any issues. But I would suggest that um, if you haven't already, that you talk with your family about your career change decision and let them know how they will benefit in the future. Um, what types of, I guess, even if it's something about a salary increase or if it will provide them a better lifestyle, if it would make you happier and give you a much more challenging career, how that would in turn um, benefit them, just things that they probably need to know. And I think that you should give them a fair warning about the amount of time and effort that it takes to become an actuary. And I would suggest that you designate a study time. That's just a time where everyone else would know that you probably don't want to be bothered. And it's a, it's a time where they have to leave you alone, maybe an hour or so. And designate a study area where you can't be disturbed or your books can't be disturbed. It's one place in your house maybe even at work, if not in your house, where you can go to study. Um, regarding the household responsibilities, you may have to ask your partner um, to take on a little bit more of the responsibilities because you will be studying. It's almost like going back to college part-time, if you can think of it that way. But I would say take some time to spend with your family, just quality time, and stick to it and it will make it a little easier on them. As far as a work-life balance, it's pretty much up to you um, just to make sure that you're happy. Um, one of the things that, well, that I do as far as my study schedule goes is that I study an hour before work. So I get in at about 7 a.m. and from 7 to 8 I study. I have a half hour lunch break. I study during that time, and then when I come home, I have another hour and a half of studying after work. And I take half of Sunday as well because that's the day I really don't have much to do. I also use my vacation time to take some time off and just study if I feel like I've fallen behind on different topics just so that I can be prepared before the exam. As far as um, hanging out with my friends or with my family, I do try to plan trips in advance because there's no way that I can just um, meet someone up um, that coming week or even maybe two weeks, especially when it gets down to the month before the exam. That's when you're really going to be focused on studying. And the most important thing about a work-life balance is to be flexible because as much as you plan, something will always come up. Um, during the holidays, I would always take extra days off so that I could have more time to study. And that's when family will surprise you and come by. So you just have to roll with the punches and study in between. Any time that you have a break, try to get ahead because you never know when one of your study sessions may be canceled before because of something else. But um, flexibility is the key. It's um, going to be a little difficult, but I've been told that once this is over, it will truly be worth it. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Alisa. Our next presenter is Francis Dugan, speaking on his experience with the transition phase. Hello, uh, my name is Francis Dugan. Uh, I live at Pennsylvania, uh, Allentown, 
and I currently teach at Penn, uh, Penn State University. I am at the Mathematics and Computer Science Department. I teach mathematics uh, different courses. Yeah, so uh, I have math background uh, uh, all through. I am currently married uh, with two kids, an eight-year-old boy and uh, uh, a five-year-old girl. Um, now, the first question is, why did I decide to go uh, in the actuarial direction? I was looking for a, a PhD program where after I am done, whatever I'll be using the math principles and concepts to do will be affecting the next person or will be uh, would go a long way to better someone someone's life discussing this with a friend in sometime 2008 2009 uh, the friend said well if you want to see how much is affecting other people's life then why not look into the actuarial uh, profession so I did and I started looking uh, seeking for information from SOA from a uh, cast website from a be an actuary to actuarial post, uh, IABA, you know, and also talking to actuaries. Now, the more I sought for information about the actuarial profession, the more I got interested, the more I got information, the more I got interested. So I realized that, yes, this is the area I want to go. So I gave myself up to 2015. Uh, to uh, transition and so currently I am at that point where I am actively looking for a job to transition and uh, preparing for this time I have passed three exams uh, P, FM and then the MFE uh, to get me ready to move uh, you know to transition uh, smoothly. The next thing is that you know you need to plan uh, your career transition, you know. So uh, by planning, this is what I mean. You should have a timeline when you want to transition into the actuarial field. Uh, you should have a timeline when you want to get your ASA. You should have a timeline when, to, when you want to get your FSA, you know, uh, so that... Um, you will be able to fo get focused. Um, having a plan and a timeline, speaking to most of, most of the actuaries, the exams are most uh, is the most challenging part of the career. So if you're able to get it out, uh, get it done, then you are able to concentrate on your career. You are able to expose yourself to uh, other projects, expose yourself to more, uh, to the modern trends that are, uh, appearing in the actuarial field, you know, you concentrate on your career and develop yourself more. So the thing is plan, get the exams out of the way as early as possible as you can, you know, and so that is what I mean by planning. So for instance, when do you want to transition? Uh, the next thing is if you, if you know when you want to transition, you also think about the number of exams you want to get done before you transition. Now, everybody agrees that having three, four exams makes you look good be, uh, in, in the sight of the recruiting manager and the actuarial people, especially for those of us coming from the uh, uh, you know, other area into that field. It makes you look good, uh, you know, before the recruiters and the hiring managers. So it is something that you want to look at. You also have to plan, uh, of course, your, when you want to get your ASA, when you want to get your FSA, so that the, the VEE is something that we, you don't hear people talking much about. But without satisfying the VEE, you can't also, you know, um, uh, get your uh, ASA. So it's something that you have to plan yeah, so the next thing you want to consider so far as um, your planning is concerned is which exams would you you would be interested in writing? Are you Would you be interested in writing the SOA exams or the CAS exams? 
um, it's something that you need to talk to talk about with somebody and know which one would be the best for you. You would also have to consider uh, which track, for instance, for SOA, they have different tracks, the finance and investment track. They also have the health, they have the annuities track, they have the uh, general insurance track, the pension and retirement track. So these are things you need to consider, look at your interests, discuss with yourself, um, you know, and, and other people and mentors that you might choose along the way. And it would help you to decide and plan, you know, as you uh, think about transitioning. The next thing that I would I like to talk about after planning is keeping ourselves motivated. Transitioning is not easy from from our field, other field into the actuarial. It's not easy because of especially because of the exams we need to write. So we need to keep ourselves motivated. And there are about four things that I think we can do uh, to keep ourselves motivated. The first is Try to look for a mentor. Uh, it has been an invaluable thing for me to have the mentors that I have now. Uh, they have been helpful at the different stages. And even now that I'm actively looking for a job, they are helpful. I will uh, 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 encourage everyone, everyone, not only those of us in career uh, who are changing careers, but anybody looking into the actual profession, look for a mentor. Uh, it is in, an invaluable experience. You can go to the uh, IABA, uh, um, IABA uh, website and request a mentor and they will help you with that. It is something that will keep you motivated and keep you going. The next uh, thing is to look for accountability partners. Um, Probably career changers who are also uh, transitioning are, are, are almost at the same stage as you are or maybe ahead of you, as long as they are also uh, career changers, it, it will help. In that case, you have some common uh, things you can talk about, family and work and other things that probably other people may not have, uh, have you know, to talk about. So... Uh, in that case, when you're writing an exam, you know, you know the sort of things you talk about. Hey, uh, I'm writing this exam. You know, how was the experience for you and those kind of things. So these are some of the things that we can do. Probably, probably, if it's a good idea for those of us who are career changers in IABA, we can think of uh, forming an accountability, uh, you know, group for ourselves. Um it's something that we can look into, hopefully, if we are all interested, you know. Uh, the third thing is network, 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 network. Uh, I find that the more you talk about your transitioning plans, the more it gets exciting and the more it gets you motivated to go on. Uh, so apart from the fact that networking is going to be helpful along the line, it is good to... Uh, network and uh, talk about your plans. It helps. Uh, the last thing about uh, motivating ourselves is uh, think, uh, planning to volunteer um, one way or the other. And I think IABA is a nice place to volunteer. Um, it has been a very, very good and excellent um, you know, experience for me volunteering as a volunteer on the I, uh, on the technology committee. I have learned things that I don't think I would have learned uh, if I had not volunteered. And so uh, you get a chance to train yourself to, you know, grow in your and hone your leadership skills and other other skills that you might need you might need when you get to 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 transition. In conclusion, if you are now in the stages of deciding whether the actual profession is for you or not, well, keep thinking about it, but don't waste much time. The time to act is now. So 
make sure you decide as quickly as possible and get going because it's a long journey. You want to get started as soon as possible if you know this is where you want to go. If you are also at the stage where I am now, I have done the little that I have to do and I'm ready to transition. If you are in that same stage too, hey, let's keep going. Uh, let's keep uh, working hard. Let's write the exams. Let's connect. Let's do all that we need to do. Find mentors that will encourage you from IABA, volunteer at IABA. Anything you have to do to keep you motivated, uh, you know, to transition uh, would be good. Thank you, Francis. Lastly, we have Keith Allen explaining why he thinks the actuarial field is a good decision for him and his family. Hi, my name is Keith Allen. Uh, Amy Geikes has asked me to give a few words, a uh, discussion about uh, my transition into the actuarial career. So I thought I'd pass along these thoughts. Uh, the first thing she asked about was whether or not it was a difficult transition from my prior career to the actuarial field career. And the question, answer to that is not so much after you start passing exams, obviously. Uh, just as a little bit of background, I was a teacher for a few years and then I went on to an insurance company as an underwriter. I hadn't heard about actuarial science actually until I got over to that company or hadn't heard much about it. I didn't really know uh, how difficult it was going to be to get into the field. But once I got over there and talked to a few people and uh, described my background in mathematics, I had a degree in mathematics from the University of Texas, they suggested that I might look into it. And I did. Uh, it was a good move for me. Uh, it was a pretty smooth transition since I was already in the field of insurance. I uh, worked for State Farm for about two or three years, and then I went over to the consulting world with uh, Towers Perrin in Denver. So the, the transition from um, one field to another, from one career to another, wasn't too bad. I, I, I guess the best thing I would say about that is uh, know what you want to do. If you, if you go in and say, uh, I really want to do this and give it your all and make the effort, uh, you can make it happen for yourself. Uh, the things that I like about the field is that it's able to, I'm able to maintain the lifestyle that I like. Uh, you know, it does give you uh, enough uh, benefits, enough compensation in order to kind of do the things you really want to do in life. If uh, traveling is one of the things you want to do, which is one of the things I like to do, uh, it did allow me to do that, uh, saving a lot of money or saving some money, <laughs> depending on how many children you have and going off to college and whatnot is definitely a plus as well. And it also allows me to have a, a nice family work balance. Uh, my focus really is on my family. Uh, my kids are, are really important to me as, long, as well as my wife. <laughs> she would definitely want to hear that. And it allows me to, the, the field, the job I have, allows me to take care of that, take care of my family and also do a really good job at work, hopefully. And it just, uh, it allows me to do the things that I like to do, the things that are important to me. It also plays to my strengths as far as uh, the type of person I am. I uh, think mathematically, logically, I tend to uh, be a little anal about some things. Uh, you know, I'm a step-by-step -step kind of person. And the field of actuarial science is uh, a process, a step process, uh, you know, you're, you're really taking steps toward becoming an actuary by taking those exams. And once you finish with that process and you start your career, you'll know that uh, a lot of what you're doing is uh, a step process in getting through the exams, after getting through the exams and, and your work and, you know, you got you know, GLMs and all kinds of things now that uh, really require you to think logically and to think uh, applying math to real world scenarios. So I, I, I do like that, you know, it's a problem solving type of situation. And I do like to solve problems. The advice I would give, first of all, is pass exams. Of course, that's the number one advice in this field. Uh, they are very difficult uh, for those that are thinking they can go in and just kind of breeze through the exams. That's never the case. Uh, those exams usually are, 
are made uh, with some type of trick questions. They're usually a, a bit uh, more difficult than what you would see in a normal uh, course load or coursework in, in college. So uh, being on top of those exams is a must. And the second and most important thing that I think uh, everyone should have as an actuary is communication skills. Uh, that's a must. If you really want to go far in your career, you really need to be able to stand up in front of a crowd and talk. Um, there's lots of different ways to gain that experience, lots of different ways to uh, find your voice. Uh, I would encourage people to look online and I think there's still Toastmasters groups available which allows you to give speeches, time speeches and what have you. Um, you know, if you get an opportunity to join a Toastmasters group, I would encourage you to do so. It just gives you that experience, gives you those um, opportunities to speak in front of a crowd, which is always helpful. And then again, I want to reiterate, know what you want to do. Um, going into an interview, going into a job, have some idea of what you want to get accomplished. Um, you know, you don't have to vocalize it necessarily, but inside for your own benefit, know what you want to get out of it. Because if you don't know, nobody's going to be able to tell you and you'll be lost and it'll be a frustrating experience for you. So kind of know where you want to go. If you want to be a chief actuary, put that as your goal and, and go for it. If you want to, if you want to sit at the desk and kind of uh, have your own lifestyle outside of work. You just want to come in, do your work, and go home. Know that ahead of time and do it. So I, I think everything is um, a goal that can be accomplished. Uh, and I wish everyone out there good luck in their endeavors to become an actuary. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. One common theme between all presenters has been that the transition will be challenging but well worth it. I hope this webinar was useful in providing insight into what you can expect as you transition. Good luck and thank you for listening.